Hi guys, it's Samuel Larson here and uh, I wanted to make a little bit of a future prediction video because right now I'm seeing a big pattern of young people going to China or Chinese superstores and buying uh, consumer items relatively cheaply compared to the Western stores. So um, I wanted to see and speculate how this could uh, change the e-commerce space and especially dropshipping space because uh, Dropshippers are really more vulnerable to this kind of stop, stuff because uh, they're essentially selling the same products. So I would say like this is the biggest trend right now in e-commerce that I see. And um, sometimes like uh, these kind of really big disrupting things, they of course, they start off in the root level where um, early adopters get on board, start using these products and then eventually like uh, the later uh, early adopters, uh, the maturity, the laggards, etc. they get on board. That's with every trend. So there's this kind of a curve where uh, things are growing in popularity. And right now with the Chinese superstores, we are at the early part of it. Now, of course, predicting the future is really difficult. So uh, forgive me if uh, you watch this five years in the future and uh, none of these stores became successful because um, it's so random sometimes. In the 70s, 80s, people thought we would have flying cars by now. So we really had no idea. But uh, I think when predicting changes, we really need to look at a couple of things. So with big changes that are coming up, it's better to look at uh, these like smaller groups that are usually adapting first, uh, because uh, that's where the future basically lies. So the best way to see this is to just look at the so-called early adopters that uh, are jumping into the new trends earlier than most people. So these are usually the most motivated group and uh, whilst not everything that they do really becomes big, uh, some of it does. So it's good to kind of like keep an eye there if you want to be really on top of business and see like uh, what's going to be big in the future. So we can predict if some, uh, some of these things that they are using, if they have a solid business case, somewhat of a protected business, etc., then uh, you can somewhat confidently predict it to be at least moderately successful because um, it would be harder for them not to succeed than it would be to, for them to really succeed. Now, to really explain this concept further, uh, I would like to think of it like um, through Uber. So a lot of people know that uh, Uber obviously is an intermediary. So you can in that sense think of it like dropshipping. So you have a supplier and you have a customer. Now in the middle there is Uber or there's the dropshipper. So Uber is acting as a middleman. You have a driver and you have a customer. And then in the middle, you have the connecting link, Uber. And it's somewhat of a same concept to dropshipping. Now, right now, there's a lot of debate to Uber's actual valuation. Uh, and the reasoning here is that uh, whilst the service is nice, but uh, it's not really providing all that much value. And it's not really like that technologically protected. I mean... The app is simple, it's quite simple, right? You have a map, you have some cars in it, you have drivers. So it's not like uh, it's a great technology company with some unique competitive advantage. And the, the reason why I'm talking about Uber here so much is that the, it's so relatable to dropshipping. So some person might just come and do it better and that could disrupt their entire business model. So if we think of it like this, Uber needs to make money, obviously. So the middleman needs to make money, they're in business. So they have to have their piece of the pie that has to be of certain size. Now, if uh, the supplier is able to eliminate the middleman, they can uh, sell it with less margin. So if the taxi companies would come along and uh, form their own Uber, for example, or 
the Uber drivers, whatever. They could then take that uh, certain percentage that Uber is making, maybe cut it in half and provide cheaper rides. So uh, we know like a uh, lot of the Uber drivers, Uber customers actually, they're really motivated to save money compared to a regular taxi. So there you could have a very much a similar situation than in e-commerce, where a lot of online shoppers are motivated to save money and because they're so motivated to save money, they're shopping online and they're looking for best deals. So that's how it relates to e-commerce. So if you are a dropshipping merchant, you are essentially an affiliate or a middleman to the products. And uh, maybe it would be somewhat accurate to say that you are the Uber. You are the platform that these purchases are happening and uh, that is connecting the visitor to the product. So there's nothing inherently genius about this platform. Uh, let's say you're running on Shopify. So anybody can have an e-commerce site these days. Like there's 500,000 Shopify stores right now. So that doesn't make you all that special. And um, this of course wasn't always the case. A few years ago, there was a lot of barriers for entry for this kind of stuff. But right now there's almost none. So what this means for the suppliers providing these dropship products is uh, they can get to the market really easily. And if the suppliers themselves can get to the market easily, what does that mean for you as a dropshipper? So obviously it's going to be a massive threat to your business model. And uh, these suppliers have been pushing the price lower and lower and uh, I would say like they're probably not an expert on the e-commerce aspect based on what I can see on these uh, sites right now. But uh, they have such massive volumes so they, they can improve their sites, etc. And they can get better at marketing and these kind of things because uh, the size is there. So the fact uh, is that uh, some of these suppliers sell their stuff super cheaply and uh, this should motivate a lot of buyers to seek them out, even if they're not advertising. So if that, those assumptions are correct, then uh, I would consider it to be a big risk for cheap uh, price uh, seekers uh, and like these kind of dropship stores that uh, are providing cheap pricing. Um, and really like cheap pricing motivates a lot of buyers because it's fairly difficult for suppliers um, to go and like market themselves. But a lot of these uh, buyers are still like enough motivated to go and seek out these products elsewhere. So we know like price shopping is a big motivator for e-commerce sites. And of course, what makes this particularly problematic is that uh, these buyers are of course also people and people talk. So if you happen to have uh, an amazing deal that uh, you find and you feel really good about it, you found from the Chinese site, um, well, that kind of information is very viral. It's very viral friendly because uh, you would want to brag about it to your friends. Like, it would be harder not to tell than to tell. Like uh, let's say you find like some amazing deal like uh, there's only a couple of dollars and normally it would be $12 on a regular store. So that is um, very much an information that you would want to tell. And uh, this is also how I heard about this. My friend started telling me that they are buying from China directly and uh, they are getting these amazing deals. And uh, when they're getting quality products for near to nothing, um, of course, like, of course, going, they're going to tell everybody. So this kind of information can really spread like wildfire, especially in the early adapter group. So people very likely don't like to feel dumb. So as we know already that the price shopping uh, is very much a motivator in e-commerce purchases. And uh, the big reason to shop online is to get it cheap. 
then let's assume those are true then the pricing is big issue here and uh, for a lot of people there's no way that uh, they could compete with these stores i mean they're selling their own product so the only way you could really compete with it would be through branding or something um, but I wouldn't say this is a very big deal yet. Like some people are doing it, especially on like uh, countries with not as much wealth. But um, as this trend is growing, it's interesting to see where it's going. So maybe young people who have a little bit less money at the moment are the ones that are more motivated to price shop. And... Uh, one thing we can expect is that uh, all the generation will also follow this trend. Uh, maybe not your grandma is going to shop from China simply because they don't trust this size. But uh, I think a great example here is uh, to look at company like Facebook, for example, and see how everybody adopted it. Uh, you could say relatively quickly. Like, uh, for example, young people, they just uh, adopted it like pretty much instantly. I mean, like we're talking like two, three years. And uh, it was like massively growing in this kind of maturity. And uh, once like that became a super normal thing on with young people, then uh, the parents of these young people, all of a sudden they started joining. And uh, once more and more joined that platform, then like they felt like they needed to be there too. Uh, so... This kind of trend can happen. So that's how everybody suddenly started using Facebook. And um, it could very well be that uh, this similar thing happens here. Now, if you look at this a little bit further uh, and deeper again, there is some big human motivation here that uh, could be driving this change. So obviously, as we covered already, one of them could be to save money. But uh, if we actually go ahead and flip that idea, um, I would say the biggest emotional reward would be not spending too much money. So basically, if you know that uh, you could have gotten that deal for, let's say, one third of the price that uh, you would pay otherwise, you will feel really dumb uh, if you pay the regular price. And nobody really likes to feel stupid. So, um, to finish off, what are the implications of this? Um, it's probably good to have stores that uh, have like these kind of more difficult to compare products. Uh, and those would be more attractive to dropshippers in the future. Uh, preferably products that can be switched to like uh, local shipping. So if the dropship store is successful, you can then uh, provide these uh, faster shipping times. So that would be nice. Um, of course, like uh, also, if you think of like where could we compete as a Western collective, maybe providing better service will become more important. Perhaps uh, there's going to be this kind of like additional incentive to move uh, over from job shipping to actually having your own storage room. So, or using some of these automatic storage facilities that already exist. And the benefit, of course, is that you can ship a lot faster than some of these Chinese companies because people still value the immediacy of this, uh, of getting their, their products. Now, also one thing uh, that could uh, protect uh, this would be of course pre preferring those products that are more immediately needed so people really don't want to wait three weeks for something but i think the biggest and the best protection will be just branding so if you have uh, picked out the products that are safe that are good uh, you can simply brand it well and uh, this would mean that this sort of branding expertise would become even more valuable in the future. So this uh, overall is one of the things that will change the landscape a little bit. 
at least a little bit. Hard to say how much yet. And uh, I would expect uh, it to be a fairly big thing though. So, but like I said, it's a fairly predict difficult to predict the future. And who really knows how it's going to develop. However, like if you look at the near history, it has shown us that the Chinese, when they get their stuff together, um, the West usually has to adapt, especially when it comes to manufacturing and when it comes to like uh, providing uh, things for a little bit cheaper than the Westerns do. And uh, I would finish off with this. It's not necessarily a bad thing necessarily. Like um, it's simply the way things are. The world is uh, evolving all the time. So we need to be in tune with the changing situations. And uh, you always have to take into account that change is natural. And uh, if we were always doing the same thing, then uh, that would be also pretty boring. And there wouldn't be all these business opportunities coming up. So in a sense, like you should love ch changes a little bit at least. Uh, because some of it will also turn into opportunity and uh, although this might make things more challenging um, there's also like different opportunities that are going to stem from it. All right that's it regarding the Chinese superstars and how dropshipping might be about to change in the next few years. Hope you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe for more e-commerce and conversion optimization videos and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.